and uh, we have added chapter one. There are two folders in the Blackboard, a slides and running slides. Slide contains the final uh, version that is, you know, we have. In the running slides, uh, we will uh, we are planning to post the existing, you know, slides. And while the proceeds, if we find any issues, anything, you know, unclear, we will, you know, add more details or fix the issues. And then when everything is finalized, those slides will be added to the uh, slides folder. Okay. Now, uh, we created this uh, comment section yesterday. Uh, and this is something manual. It is not automatic. So if you registered uh, yesterday late, then most probably uh, you may not be in the comment section. If that is the case, then please uh, text me or email me and we will uh, add you to the comment section. Okay. All right. So this slide, uh, the, the chapter two, is right now available in the comment section and you can download it if you like. All right, so in the last class, we have seen uh, list comprehensions and enumerate. So let us quickly revise what we mean by list comprehension. What we mean by list comprehension. Anybody in the class can help me in, in, in remembering what list comprehension is. What is the purpose of list comprehension? Okay, so Kumail, go ahead. Uh, Okay, uh, Nawaf, uh, somebody was raising hand and uh, I just missed. Okay, that's right, yeah. Okay, so uh, don't raise hands guys because I cannot see the who is raising hand. It, it just shows and goes off, okay? Okay, yeah, so that was naive I believe. That's right. So you guys are giving me the answers. That's right. So the purpose is to basically to create list. Okay. And yes, it's a short form and maybe a compact way. And you know, uh, many things that, you, that you're saying in the chat. Yes, those are all uh, relevant. Uh, and the structure is something like this. Okay, the structure in short is something like this. Uh, here you have the element that you would like to append. Okay, the element that you'd like to append. And then uh, there is a loop over which you are appending. Okay, element and loop. Maybe this is a very simple way to, to remember the list comprehensions. Of course, uh, in the element, you could have used the if statement based on some condition and uh, you know, have different effects. In the loop, also you can add the if statement here afterwards, uh, after the loop to, to modify the, the behavior of the loop or you can have the nested loops okay so you can have modifications over this side or that side and in the end what you get is a new list okay in the end what you get is a new list okay that is this uh, yes uh it didn't uh, record start record this uh, i didn't start recording okay this yes. is good uh, that you reminded me uh, yeah. No, no, I, I started recording. It is being recorded. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, we have a, a new list uh, using this list comprehension. And this is, I believe, uh, one of the, the the ways to create the list in Python. And uh, once we did the list comprehensions, we went to the enumerate. Can anybody remind me what was the purpose of the enumerate function or the enumerate method? That's right, Muhammad. So enumerate, when you use this enumerate of a list, What it gives me, see, uh, in Python, I don't know if, if in ICS 104, they talked about iterators and, uh, you know, uh, generators. Have you heard about iterators and generators in, in Python uh, 104? In 104 class? Yeah. 
So uh, maybe it's, but you know, instead of using that language, let me just tell you. So what it enumerate over the list does, it, it does something like this. So you give it the list and it starts to throw um, the, the value of the list and the index of that value. So it, it throws such uh, uh, item value uh, pairs, not with the brackets because it is not a tuple. So it throws this out and you can use it in a statement. So whenever in the programming, whenever in the programming you have to know, for example, uh, the index value as well as the actual value of the list element, then you go with the enumerate. This is very, very handy and we will use it a lot in our uh, data science because you will have list you will have data actually you know, which could uh, be numbers integers or it could be text or it could be you know any special characters or whatever you have list of something and you might want to get the index information while doing some tasks then enumerate is the only way now you can use enumerate for everything that is iterable okay so here we are just looking at the list for now uh, but you will be surprised that instead of list, you can have anything which is iterable. And that's why in Python, you have a very important concept called iterable. In uh, typical programming languages like C and those, okay, uh, you have only arrays or list basically that is that you can iterate. But in Python, you have many things that you can iterate. You can iterate over plots. You can iterate over uh, uh, objects okay the, the the general form of iterator is uh, iterable thing is an object so yeah you can iterate over many things okay yeah you can iterate over strings so python gives you lots of flexibility and whatever thing you can iterate or the iterable you can use the enumerate and enumerate for whatever thing here that you give it gives two things out one is the index of that thing and the second one is the thing itself okay so that is the purpose of enumerate and we have seen this in the last class. So let us continue from the here. Uh, okay. We, I believe we covered, uh, yeah, we covered this. And I think this is where we stopped. We didn't start zip, right? Yeah, I think we didn't start zip. So let us start with the uh, concept of zip, okay? For that, uh, here I have a list. This is a nested list, or you can say list inside a list. So if you see here, here I have a list of apple, banana, orange, and then another list of watermelon, plum, grapes, and the list of strawberry, pear, and mango. And all of these lists are part of a bigger list. So first thing I would like to do is I would like to get a new list containing all the fruits. So can anybody help me in on obtaining that? So that's what we have. So can anybody help me in getting rid of these uh, brackets and, and coming up with one list? Any ideas, any suggestions? Okay, now that's okay. Yeah, Kumail, that, that, that's the idea, yes using nested loops. So let us start with the nested loop because the most simple idea is the nested loops. And then we will move towards the solution that we have from uh, NIAF, okay? So let us start with the nested loop. So any suggestions on the nested loop, Hadi? For let's say list, let us see what we have in fruits, okay? And whenever you are unsure, uh, of course, here we are not unsure, but let us say in general, whenever you are unsure, uh, one of the easy ways is just to unpack and see. So when I, un let me remove this. So when I unpack and see things, I realize that when I unpack fruits, what I'm getting are lists. Okay. So that means it's a list of lists. So let me call it as list one. 
for each list one, let us see what's inside. So for E in list one, let us see what we have. Oh, then I'm getting the right thing. So that is the nesting that I'm interested in. And how to create a new list? Now we know many ways to create a new list. For example, let's say list uh, two is empty thing. And then you could say uh, list two dot pen. Uh, e. And then you enter it. Yes, yeah. Now that's the uh, append style. But now let us remove the append style to our uh, list comprehension style. So how to ch change this to li list comprehension style? Can you hear me? OK, all right. So see, what are we appending? We are appending whatever we're getting from this list too, right? So we can create this comprehension. I'm going to say this is the thing that we are, sorry, appending from this loop. But I don't know where list one is coming from right now. Looking at this, I know it is coming from this one. So that together, okay. So now I know fruits. From fruits, you get the list, okay. And now for each list, you get the element. And the element is what you are placing. And let us call this as uh, list three. And now you can print. That's right. Nice. And this will give you the the same result. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's right. So I think, yeah. So this is, yes, you can say that, Ahmed. Uh, this is like a nested um, uh, list comprehension. And in fact, if you know about generators and those things, um, which is very useful topic, you could have just created here something like this for E in, let's say, generator of, uh, example, uh, fruits, and you'll get it. Okay. Now, again, I don't want you to guys to uh, get confused, but generators is something very nice uh, thing. And uh, how it is done, maybe I'll show you quickly. Uh, and uh, yeah. What do you think this will do? Anybody in the class? What do you think this will do? Some issue with the interpretation. Oh, my bad. Yeah. So it returns the first element, apple. Not each element, just the first element, right? Because the moment you have the return, it gets out of the function, isn't it? You know this, right? This is a function, right? And the return thing will take you out of the function. But if you take, if you, after the first value, if you go out of the function, then it is useless, right? Because we wanted to go over all the values. So how to overcome that? Well, that's where Python gives you a very powerful technique called generators. Okay, sorry. So now, instead of return, you say yield. So you send a value, do whatever you need, and then come back again and get the next value. Come back again and get the next value. And using that, you can have something like this. Very neat. But again, it requires you to know uh, generators. And we don't have to know that for our course. Uh, but you see, it makes things much, much uh, neat and elegant. Okay? 
and actually are very fast and space saving in the sense that you will have uh, less memory use in these things okay and now you can have very complicated uh, things going on inside this and you can create any list by list comprehension and the compl complex way of uh, the loop okay uh, what does it do again doctor uh, generation or generator uh, generator is is just in in rough way remember the generator is like a function but it it doesn't just you know send the values in one single shot it send the value and then you come back here it sends the value you come back here it sends the value you come back here sends the value so it is like something that is generating the values one after the other until you fi finish with all the values okay so that's i i you know if it is confusing just don't worry because we don't need it but i just thought that it might be you know something that that, that would might be helpful for you guys okay any other question okay so if not uh, we created this list okay we created this list from this uh, nested list and we have all the fruits now now he, he's asking us to create a new list let's say a name zip zap and that uh, list uh, it contains uh, what it contains tuples and what are those tuples tuples of the fruit name and the length of the name for example that's the list that we are interested to make where here you have for example a tuple first element is a tuple which has two elements apple and the length of apple which is five similarly the second element will be let's say banana and the length will be uh, six similarly the last element uh, when you have this list uh, you will see that why watermelon maybe i i, I just copied from the previous uh, <clears throat> example but whatever is the last uh, element let us say it's watermelon then the length of the string here which is what 10 it will be should be here okay so for that uh, we need to first create a list and once you have two lists you can join them for various purposes uh, we use various techniques one of the way to join them uh, correspondingly is by zip function is by zip function and for that let let me give you an example let us create two list list one let us say a okay let me do it very quickly a b c d dot split don't worry about split we will see actually in, in our class but i just wanted to have something quick here and then let us say uh, list two is uh, one four two three okay now let us say i want to join them correspondingly so a with one b with two c sorry b with four c with two d with three then you could say zip of list one so a is going to come first then list two okay and if you want to print it uh, you have to create a list out of it and you can see this is what it gives you a with one b4 c2 d3 so that's one practical way uh, to combine two lists this is very helpful for you know when you have a for loop and you would like to search over two lists simultaneously or get the values from two lists simultaneously you can do it yeah zip returns an object that's right it's a generator object nowadays in python everything is generated for even your range i'm not sure but if you if you see this range what will it give you it will give you an object okay it is not a list no it doesn't give you a list see here let me hide it it gives you a range object if you want to get those numbers then you have to get the list out of it okay the range is a generator okay the one that we showed just so now it gives it okay not cast but yeah you can say cast or convert it to list okay similarly here for zip it gives you zip object okay it's a generator so now if you get the list of it uh, and then you get this list okay 
Now let's go back to the Maj's question. What will ha what will happen if two lists don't have the same length? If they don't have the same length, the default approach is you pick the shortest one and you ignore the other. For example, let me just have one, four. Then you see only the one and four are taken care. The extra things are ignored. Okay, that's the default. Uh, uh, you can say uh, thing for zip. That NAF has a yes, NAF, yes, you can do that, but all of that, what you have, uh, okay, the, this one, uh, no, I think the for loop has an issue, the for loop has an issue there uh, because the for loop is not nested, so there are two for loops together. I think this will be a problem. Let us try, let us try and see quickly if it works or not. Uh, let us call it as uh, i comma j for i in list one for j in list two and just to make it you know error free and let us do a print of this i give all possible combinations so a1 a4 a2 a3 b1 b4 so this is something that we, we don't want, okay? So what we wanted is not from this, okay? And uh, this is a good idea. Okay. So if you want to do uh, corresponding, you can say uh, um, tuples for a first element here, first element here, second element, second element, yeah. No, we, you, we need to, to come up with this list. Can we do enumerate? No. But can we use enumerate on this list? Yes. Okay. So your question is not clear, Osama. But if you want to, if you're asking that, can we use enumerate on this list? Yes, you can use enumerate on this list. But if your question is, can you use enumerate on this to get this? No, you cannot. Because these are two different lists. Okay. These are two different lists. Is it clear? Yes, no. Okay. All right. So that is how you use zip. And here I created uh, the, the zip of, of, of all fruits and the length of the fruits. Now, zip is a new object that we have. Uh, and for programming, if the object is useful, you should be able to iterate over it. And Python has a nice thing that you can iterate over many types of things. You don't have to just have a list to, to iterate. In general, in Python, all those things over which you can iterate are called as iterables, okay, are called as iterables. And zip is one of them. So let us see how we can iterate over the zip. For that, let me just uh, execute these codes. Again, because uh, in, the, in that class, we, yeah. And now I have a list, a zip zap. Let us go to our uh, work here. And we have this tuple. So let us see what will happen if we enumerate. Sorry, enumerate in the sense if I loop over it, okay? Because enumerate as a function means something else, but in English, in just wording, it means something else, right? So to quickly see what do we have in there we can just use for and see if we can get inside it and yes it says that this iterable the dictionary is giving me these tuples now for these tuples uh, you can extract the values here outside okay extract the values outside or you can extract the values from the for statement itself for example, I can say, uh, let's say m comma n, where m is the first value, n is the second value. And then here you could say the first value, second value. And they will give you the same results. Okay. Let me comment this. So whenever you have an iterator, okay, uh, which gives you uh, some, uh, you can say, tuples or uh, something um, apart from the usual single value, then you can extract them 
here itself in the for line for statement okay or you can extract it in the code so you have two options uh, this is uh, you know something that we have seen uh, if you remember if you, whenever you had enumerate list you have the index and value okay so uh, we have this nice uh, flexibility in the for statement itself to extract the things here or you can extract it later this is much better yes and we use this a lot in our course but again remember that there are two different ways and you have to be flexible you can either follow this or that and whatever is the best use it okay they have the same efficiency they have the same efficiency okay so here we are seeing those two ways of uh, extracting the elements from the zip item now let us look at this okay. Yes, sure. So whenever you have uh, any item, here, here it is zip object, but whenever you have any type of object in programming, we would like to see, uh, at, at least in Python, okay, I'm not sure about the others, uh, that how, if it's iterable, what are the things it will generate, it will give, okay? Uh, so quick way to check what it, things are inside this is to just write the for statement. And here I could see that every element in zip zap is a tuple. So I know that E for the first iteration will be this tuple. So if I want to get the value of uh, Apple separately or five separately for some other purpose later on in your code, uh, then you can do something like this. E which will be a tuple and E zero will be the first uh, element, E one will be the second element. And this is one way to extract the values from the zip. The other way is to extract that in, in the extract the values in the for statement itself. Because I know that zip will throw two values, I'm going to cache those two values here itself. And this is another style. And those two styles will give me the same uh, values, okay? Uh, same output, same result. And now, now I can use M or N for various purpose in the rest of the code. What if the tube will have different sizes? That's a good question. Uh, if the tube will have different sizes, then this approach will not work. Then this approach will not work. Uh, then this approach with some if condition here on the length will work. Hadi? But remember here, the discussion is with zip. Very rarely you will have the, the, the scenario that you mentioned where the tuples have different lengths. Usually the tuples that we get is by zip method. And those zip method will have the same size. Okay. Uh, All right. What yes. about if we have uh, inside the tuple itself, there's like three elements. Will this work? If we yeah, have, yeah. We'll... yeah, it will work if you have three or even more. Okay the same idea so it's you know you can have m n k maybe you know, three index here or e0 e1 e2 yeah, it will work all right now we move to the next uh, question the next question says to iterate over the same list zip zap but this time it asks you to to, to to print the index as well as the elements okay so not only is that zip zap, I also want to print the index. So one way to print the index is, uh, you can get the index from here, okay? How to get the index from something that is uh, iterable? How to get the index from something that is iterable? And in the for statement, if I want to get index, uh, how to get it? And if the index for this first thing should be zero. Yes, that's right. We use enumerate. Okay. So enumerate will throw two things out. Remember, what is the first thing? The first thing is always. The first thing is always. Index. Okay. The first thing is always index. The second thing is whatever is inside. And you can see actually. Let us print all the three. And you can see, let me use E as is first. So, so the first is the index, 
and the second is the tuple. Again, the same story. If you want to extract it here, this is how you extract, and you get all the three. This is the value of index, which is i. That's the first element of the tuple. There's a second element. If you want to flip them, you can flip them, and you can do, you know, depending on the requirement, you can do many things. Now, now we go to the interesting part, which NIF is trying to ask. Yes. So now, how to extract in this case? Uh, you can use I, M, N if they are at the same level. But remember, I is the index, whereas M, N, they are inside tuple. Okay. So this is how you can use it. They are inside tuple. Okay. So now I can extract the values. So I'm saying that enumerate throws two things out. The first one is index. The second one is whatever is the value. The value itself is a tuple and a tuple of two uh, elements. And the first one is M, second one is N. And now you see you get what you want. OK, so if I write it without this, it is not going to work. Okay. Is that clear? OK, so now we have another powerful uh, you know, tool, Zip, uh, that is very useful in, in, in data science. And uh, we know now how to zip two lists and you know how to iterate over those, OK? Now we move to another important uh, functionality from Python, dictionary, OK? Uh, you must have seen dictionary in ICS 104, yes or no? Yes. Now let us uh, quickly revise and, and see where we need uh, dictionaries and also why we need dictionaries, OK? And let me give you the first answer for why uh, we need dictionaries. Uh, so let us say you have two lists. Okay, list one has this Ahmad uh, H let's say, salary and oh, I'm doing completely messed up thing. It later. Let's say and uh, okay. So that's list one, and if you print it, what you get is these four uh, elements. Now. If I want to know the index of these elements, uh, yes, I can get. I know that the index of this is 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. But it will be sometimes very hard to know the index of each element. For example, I am interested in the name. And then I have to see what is the index of the name. I am confident about the name, but I was not confident about the index. So every time I have to look up. How about we come up with a functionality that tells the element based on a different type of index altogether. And that index, you can define it. So you can define something meaningful. You can define something meaningful. For example, let me define a list first. Let's say uh, name, and then you know, age, salary, and, and city. So for me, this is more meaningful. Uh, then remembering 0, 1, and so on and so forth. So I would like to come up with a mechanism. That's, and I'm just giving you that for intuition why dictionaries are, you know, uh, useful, okay? So I would like to have a mechanism where the index is no more 0, 1, 2. It is something that I can remember easily and use it, and something easy to understand. And that's where the dictionary comes in. Okay, it has many purposes, but I think this intuition is more um, useful. So I can create a new uh, item. Let's call it by a name called the book. Yes, that's right, Faisal. And first, you know, there are many ways to, to create a dictionary. Uh, you can create a dictionary, you know, by by many styles. But the one that we many a times we use, uh, we can do it manual also. But let me show you something uh, easy is to get the zip of these two lists. 
Now, when you create a dictionary, there are two things to remember, key and the value, okay? What is the key and what's the value? Value is this, for example, Ahmad 22, all these are values. Key is something that you are trying to use instead of index, okay? So if you want to create a dictionary of two lists and you want one of the list, for example, here list two to be the key, it should come first. The first one will be assigned to the key. The second one will be assigned to the value. And now if you see what is inside this book, you will see that it's a dictionary. Now, if you want to create a dictionary manually, you could have just written it like this. For example, you could have written, uh, let's say, A, B, C, something uh, equals to this. And this is a dictionary that is written manually. Like I have written the list here manually. I can write the dictionaries here manually. And I could say, for example, what is this A, B, C, and, oops, uh, that is, yeah. let's say it's a dictionary, okay? So if you want to create it manually, yes, you can create it. You can create your own uh, uh, key value pair or, or, you can use a zip, a dick of zip, and you know this is a dictionary of, of zip, and this is something very easy and very handy. Yes, you can create dictionary without zip, and it should be done manually, like this. Okay, Albasel. Yeah. Or you can use loop. That's right. You can use loop. You can use. In fact, you can use list comprehension. Uh, we didn't go that deep in in this slide. But yes, you can use a list comprehension. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can use many things to create the dictionary. All it needs is, is how to have such pair. The first one is key, the second one is value. Now having this knowledge of dictionary, you can create many nice uh, functionalities, which might be difficult using the lists, okay? And here is a simple example to show how useful they could be. Here I have two lists, okay? Uh, one is a list of fruits, the other one is a list of uh, prices. And I would like to create a dictionary, let us call it book one, where the fruits are the keys and uh, prices are the values. So how to create such dictionary? I have two lists, fruits and prices. I want to have a dictionary, let's call it as book one, which has keys, fruits and values, as prices. Can you tell me in, in this message how to create such dictionary? Guys, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Guys in the class. How do yeah. we make uh, this dictionary? You mean the first Yeah, how to process? make a dictionary? Yes. Uh, like we did uh, earlier dictionary, then zip, then put the two lists, yes. right? Okay, yeah, that's right. And I got the answers, two answers, which both of them are right answers. Yes, good. Okay. Now, let's, let's look at the second question now. Loop over all the key and value pairs of this dictionary. Okay. So now you have this uh, dictionary. Here it is, book one. Okay. And now we need to know how to loop over book one. So book one, A dictionary. We'd like to see how to loop, okay? Okay, okay. Hussein has some comment I just saw. Can I use set? No, no. Set is something else, okay? Set is something else, Hussein. Uh, we cannot use instead of dictionary set. All right. Uh, yeah. So I would I like to see how I can, you know, loop uh, over dictionary. So again, uh, when nothing is clear, we just, of course it is clear, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, we just uh, do this check and see what we are getting. Okay, I'm getting only the keys. So how to get everything from here? Well, you can say I terms, and now you get the tuples. So now it is something familiar, and you know that you know dictionaries now with dot items behave exactly like your uh, zip uh, list, okay, zip list. So how to iterate over them? And for example, I want to print, let's say, all the items. You can say, for example, k comma. That's good. 
en or it's better to use kv where k is always the key and v then the next one will be the values and now you get all the key value pairs so for key value pairs in the dictionary dot items you iterate it okay that's good so any questions any comments how to create dictionary or how to uh, loop over dictionary okay okay so here is uh, you know i did the same thing the only difference is i just added some text using the for format or the f string now the question says to create another dictionary let us say uh, what is the benefit of items uh, okay let me just then go back to show what so so if i iterate over the dictionary as is the default option is to iterate over the keys so it will just give you all the keys okay these are all the keys of the dictionary but if you want to get both the keys and items then you have the then you have many actually ways to do it one of the way is to use dot items uh, attribute of the dictionary and so this will give us what a tuple that contains both the key and the value key value so dot items will help us to get uh, key and the value pairs okay it is not the only way but it is one of the use, useful ways Okay, Osama, is it clear? All right. So now the next question says to create a dictionary, let us say book two. And what do you want in the dictionary? It should have keys, unique numbers. Maybe you can say zero, one, two, three, so on. And what should be the values? The values should be the fruits. Okay. So how to do that? Well, uh, for example, you could create something like this book two i can say it's a dictionary and this is the quickest way to make a dictionary of a zip uh, of two list list one something that we don't know yet list two is all the fruits what do you think list one should be the, he says the keys should be unique numbers okay so we can have from one to eight for example i could say uh, range len and then i want to get the list from here so i could say list of this then yeah so that will be our first list and now we let me write book two and you see that we have it okay so you have two lists list one which is just the numbers list two which is the fruits and you get two uh, lists and then you zip it and make a dictionary out of it and you get two books book one book two. so book two has what numbers and the fruits so the question is this if i give this book two and ask you to pick a fruit from here can you pick just randomly one fr fruit from here let's say plum so the number corresponding to that is what pick a number so you are picking four. So if somebody gives me four, can I tell what is the price of the plum? Let's say you selected four. Can you tell me how to use book one? Let me show what is inside book one. This is what is inside book one. For example, if somebody selected four, then four corresponds to plum. And the value of uh, the price for the plum is 28. So can we get 28? by asking input as four how to do that that's right hadi so book two of sorry, book two of four gives me what let me show you the book two first So book two is this. What do you think you will get by, by saying book two of four? It gives plum. Why? Because the key is four. Okay, here, uh, you know, maybe it's not the best example, 
but here it is by the order but even if it's random whichever whatever is the key that is what is going to give so now it gives me plum and this is what plum is the key for book one and if i write book one and you can say plum then you see you get 28 to connect these two you can have a nested not nested you know connected them like connect them like this and now you get you input four which corresponds to the key for the fruit and what you get is the price okay and using this idea okay using this idea you can create something that i did here uh, it's something uh, sim simple and uh, this part of the code is just for decoration so you don't have to you know, worry about it just uh, you know have a look and you know it should be clear just for decoration so the idea is this use show book one to the user and ask him to pick uh, a number from here for example let us say this time i pick number let's say three okay so when i pick the number three it does all those that we just discussed and it will say you you picked watermelon and the price of watermelon is 13. and this to create this you know small not really you know it's something you know simple uh, graphics uh, we have to use this code but the main uh, idea is here you get the input and uh, Yes, uh, Hadi, you can do all those things. Yes, uh, you can do all those things. But here, uh, we are treating them as two separate dictionaries. OK, so the idea is, is captured here. Uh, from the user, you get the item number that is selected. And from the item uh, number and using the book two, you get the fruit that is selected. And using the fruit selected, you get the price. Or in single shot, like we discussed, you can do it in this single shot like this. Uh, book one of book two of item selected will give me the price selected. So you have two styles. Uh, I would prefer this style, uh, but uh, we left it like this so that it will be easy for you know for understanding. Okay. And using this idea, uh, if you are familiar with uh, TK, Inter, or any you know GUI. You can create your own main list and you know you can come up with your own apps actually okay any question any comments about uh, dictionaries all right if not you have to remember a couple of things about dictionaries uh, the first and the most important one is you your the keys should be unique you cannot have duplicate keys you cannot have multiple keys with the same uh, value uh, with the same sorry uh, name okay so we should have different uh, keys in, in in a given dictionary okay now the keys can be of any type so here we have two dictionaries in one of the dictionary the keys are strings in another dictionary the keys are letters uh, sorry uh, integers and you could have a dictionary where the keys could be tuple and it could be anything you could have anything, any object as key. The only restriction is that it should be immutable. So what are immutable and mutables? In Python, you have two types of objects. Immutable are the ones that once you define will never change. Mutable are the ones that will change. For example, your list is mutable. You can always change the list. Uh, for Let me give an example here. For example, you could have, let's say, list. Uh, equals one four five I could use different functions and change for example I could make it two or I could add here seven I could change numbers or I could add numbers and so on and so forth whereas you have tuples okay? once you define what tuple one four five there is no way you can change it by the way tuple should be you know, different okay? so once you define tuple uh, there is no way you can change it or uh, add anything here it is fixed so these are uh, immutable whereas a list they are mutable okay so you cannot have a key which is mutable 
but you can have a key which is immutable. So all the strings, strings are uh, immutable. Uh, you can have integer scalars. Uh, they are uh, even the floats, anything, uh, numbers, but not in, in, in array form, just a scalar number. It, they are all uh, immutable. Tuples are immutable, and many other things are immutable, but this is enough for us. All right, now we move to the next topic. This is about strings, how we can process the strings, different functions or methods for strings. Uh, out of the box, uh, the moment you have Python downloaded for you, you have some nice inbuilt functions for strings that can help you to do lots of text processing. Uh, for data science course, we need some key string methods like you know split, join, replace, uh, and you know, yeah, these are good enough number of uh, methods. So we are going to look at those methods through this example. Let us say we have some text. For example, here we have this text given to us. And we realize that the text needs some processing. And we don't want to do it manually. We want to use a code to do it. What is the main issue here? The issue is this. The sentences, this, they don't start with capital letters. All of the sentences, they start with small letter. So this is something that I need to fix. The other thing that I realized is uh, I need to have, let's say, this word in all caps because it's acronym for industrial systems. It should be in all caps. And maybe you can find many other issues and you can fix it programmatically. But at least these two issues, let us fix. So how do you plan to fix those issues? Well, we come up with this plan. The first thing is to break down this text into sentences, actually list of sentences. Then for each sentence, you capitalize the first word. And let us say if the sentence also contains ISE, then you capitalize it, uh, okay? And then finally, you join all the sentences and you can print those sentences to, to see the new string, okay, new text. Now, that's the text that we have. Let us print it. Now, how to catch each sentence? How to catch each sentence. I have to break the text, that's right. I think that's right. So what is the function to break? Well, uh, you have a nice method in, in Python called split, and you can use split to, to break it. For example, it's a text.split, okay. and the criteria inside the bracket. Let us say I'm, I'm using the criteria, which is white spaces, okay? Then what I will get is all the words in this in, in this uh, paragraph or text, all the words. But this is not the split we are looking for, right? We would like to split so that we get sentences. So, you know, if punctuations are right, then splitting it at full stop will give you the sentences. But there is a problem here. Can you tell me what are the problems here? Okay, extra element, that's right, and backslash, and two issues. Yes, both issues are good. So uh, uh, let us fix them. The first issue, which is extra element, can be fixed easily. How to fix the first issue? How to kick this out? Yeah, you can use pop or remove, because I know that it is the last element I know the index, so I can use pop. What's the index of the last element? How to catch? One, two, three, Negative count one. it like this? No, you just write minus one, that's good, very good. Okay. Of course you can count it, but we want to do those things, right? And now let me print the sentences, and you see that things, that first issue disappeared. What about the second issue, the backslash n? How to get rid of backslash n? Yes, but that 
the function that you have strip uh, that will not work that is defined for strings and sentences the, the sentences here they are not string it's a list of string so how to get string from the list of string what is the idea you can see that right how to get to the strings yeah that's good that's right hadi so i'm going to get to each string i'm going to say for uh, s in sentences and now i could say for example s dot strip example let's call it as some temp and then let us get a new now okay. now you can see that backslash is is gone that this method dot strip it will remove all the unnecessary things you can also specify for example backslash n but that is a default uh, thing okay yeah or you can use r strip which is also fine but strip will also work r strip i think it stands for raw uh, to that so you you remove all the raw elements like uh, backslash n backslash t and those things or even a strip will work okay yes so what things do you think you need we we kept see the only thing that we removed is that backslash n okay the only thing that we removed is backslash n yeah everything else is here again if you if you want to make sure that it doesn't remove anything else which is nothing you use this okay you specify that yeah okay let me read the question majid has give a big question can i get rid of every second index of every sentence beginning of the second sentence okay this question actually is a bit confusing to me uh, can you you know put it in a different uh, format for me to understand majid um. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Oh my God. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Majid. Uh, what I mean, Doctor, is uh, can I get rid of every two, um, every two letters in the second sentence? So I can, for example, start from the second sentence, second index. Okay, as a loop. And uh, get rid of by pop by the first two letters in every first sentence. I don't know how to yeah. actually have to explain. Yeah, you can do that. That's a good uh, suggestion. But the problem is uh, uh, when you do such um, loop, you cannot start from between. Okay. If you want to start from between, what will you do? You write a if statement. and check if it is second index uh, second uh, index or not okay that's the first issue with that yes you can do and the second thing is uh, again you are not sure that backslash n will always come at the first place it may not come at all or it may uh, come for example let me just change the text here like this and now print the text sorry print the sentences you see here it's not the first not the second it is starting from the third one you see this oh, yeah it? yeah i can see it now so that could be an issue because you might remove something from here which was not meant to be so that is why uh, that idea may not be that practical and uh, but, but otherwise it's interesting if you know from the beginning that every uh, first is is, a, is element should be removed yes you can uh, do it just by Uh, slicing okay oh. and uh, 
the, the, the second thing to remember is you cannot start from between. Uh, this is one, one of the things to remember uh, in any language, not only here, that if you are given with something to iterate, to iterate from a specific point is different, but to iterate from the beginning to end is, is the easy one. Okay. Oh, okay. All Thank right. You. Okay. So let us come in this. Why didn't you split by space? If I split by space, I will get words. Uh, and uh, remember, what was our main goal or the main task? That I want in the end this W to be capital, this I to be capital, this A to be capital. So I don't want all the letters. Okay. Yeah, I'm interested in sentence. That's right, Faisal. Okay. So uh, by this statement, what I got is um, those statements. Now, how to capitalize? The first element I could use upper let me show you two things if I use upper everything will be in upper case forms but I don't want to use upper so you have upper you have lower and you have capitalize okay. and the capitalized one is the one that just makes the first uh, I think uh, I did some mistake Yeah, the string, I think I did some modification, but now it's fine. So you see the first ones are all capitalized. Yes, Hadi, temp zero dot upper will work, but remember strings are uh, immutable, so you cannot add it back. Adding back will be slightly not straightforward. Oh, let us see, maybe it is, maybe it is. Yes, let us. Yeah. Oh. No. Then you have to add it manually. It will be a bit, bit lengthy. And that's why you know, the capitalize is built in for you. OK? Uh, that will not work, Hadi. The one that you just typed will not work. Okay? Because on the left-hand side, you have a tag string. And the right-hand side, you have one letter, one letter. So that will not work. Okay. So capitalize. See, you have upper, lower, capitalize. So capitalize purpose is this, to make the first uh, element of the string capital. Okay. Now the other thing remaining is this ISC here. Uh, we would like to make it all caps. Yes, that's what we want to do, Faisal. So I would like to say temp temp dot replace. Replace is also very powerful. In, you know, in our course, the one that we're going to use most is replace, uh, split, and also join. These are very common that we're going to use. Uh, strip very rarely, and capitalize. I think we'll never use it. Okay. So replace has two arguments. One is what is the value that you're looking to replace, and what is the value that you're looking will be replaced with. So ISC is the value that I'm going to look. And if I find a match, I will replace that with uh, this. To, to be careful, sometimes the statements could be, you know, have ISC hidden here and there. So you can, for example, keep the spaces to make sure that it's an independent work. For example, if I, you know, have here, let's say, WI wise and uh, then it will make sure that this ISC is not affected. Okay, only this is affected. Uh, I think replace doesn't do that number of arguments. Actually, we can check. Let me just show. So you know how to get the help in in, in Python. If I want to know more about the function, do you know how to get that? Oh, this is bad. In Python, you can get the help of for any function. For example, I could say string dot replace, and it gives me uh, replace of string object needs argument. Okay, so I don't need to have this. Okay, so it says replace self old new count. Let's see. Yeah. 
uh, you are right, Mubarak. There is such option. You can do maximum number of occurrences to replace. Okay, count works. So this is a quick check. Okay, there are so many functions, and uh, we we hardly remember few of them. Uh, and for each function, you will have so many options. So here is the thing uh, to answer your question. Okay. So yes, you can have an argument, uh, which is a keyword argument, by the way. So the count is a keyword, and then the number of times to replace. Okay, Mubarak, did I answer your question now? Okay, all right. And please remember this uh, in, in Python, uh, you can just type in notebooks help and the name of the function to get everything about the function. So uh, if you know the name of the function, then you can get all the information. So please remember this and use this. That's why here I'm not explaining you these methods. In fact, in the references, if you see here, I'm just uh, telling you just go there and see what the function does or type help and read in, in your notebook what the function does. Okay, because memorizing all of this is uh, really uh, not helpful. You will run out of uh, things to memorize. There were too many things to memorize. You will never run. You will see too many things to memorize. Okay. So get rid of this. All right. Uh, I'm, which exams? In, in, IS, in our course? No, no. In, in this exam, in, in our course, yes, you are allowed to do the reference. And maybe uh, you are allowed to do the uh, online as well. Okay. Yes, in person, but we will give you all the tools that you need. If you think that you have to memorize, forget it. We are not going to ask you a question that will uh, need your memorization. No, you should understand why and how they are working, not to memorize it. You will not have the question that will ask you to memorize. We will give you. The, the exam in a way that the memor memorization is not needed. Please remember that. Last time we had online exams, we allowed the students to even refer uh, online uh, libraries. Okay, so you could go to Google or these libraries and you can refer the function. Apart from that, you can you know in in your notebooks you could just type help and get it. So yes, uh, memorization is not needed in this course, but understanding is important and that's what is needed. Okay. Uh, please uh, check the code or after the class uh, send the code. Okay, make sure that you are catching the string not the list if you catch the list it will not work okay. Now uh, So what did we do essentially well we took a list which is sentences and then we did some modification and created a list but creating a list what should pop up in your mind? The first thing when somebody is creating the list, what should pop up in the mind? List comprehension, that's right. So why to do all this, uh, the same business can be done by list comprehension. So let us see how it can be done. And this is very important. So please guys pay attention. There are two types of methods in Python. One that returns the value, any, for example, uh, let me just uh, show you those two. Uh, for example, you have uh, S E. Let's say something is uh, sorted sentences. Okay, and then print S E. What does it do? What did I get in S E? A list, but what's the difference between SE and sentences? Quickly, we're running out of time. So the sentences, no, it is sorted, right? You can see it's sorted, okay? So the sentences are sorted. So here you have with A, then I, and W. Whereas uh, the earlier one, no, it was in, in the order. So this method or function is going to give you a new list with the modifications, but the old one will stay the same. Okay, the old one, the sentences, for example, if I print the sentences here, it will remain the same. 
it will remain the same okay same order then there are other type of methods that operate on the follower itself for example you can say dot sort and now you see the sentences itself has changed such methods you can have a chain of those methods and this is something that we use a lot uh, in, in our data science course and maybe in other courses also what i mean is for example you have dot replace i could add it like this in one single shot so in one single shot i could say like this so it is going to do all these things one by one in this one line so first it's going to get the string uh, from the sentences from the list and then it's going to get rid of backslash n and then it's going to capitalize and then it's going to replace this and then you have the sentences okay so you see all those four lines are combined into one single line so whenever you see such dot 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 in your mind you either can think of separating them or you can actually separate if you want but i don't recommend to actually separate it's better that you separate in your mind and see uh, visualize how it works okay yeah and the last statement yes we'll come back to that okay so now using all of this uh, you you have those sentences in the right format the last thing we would like to do is we'd like to join and to join the list uh, the the elements of the list we have this function called dot join okay and for that let me give you an example yeah if you have errors please uh, after the class i will explain you okay so let's say a b c d split and just to be very fast So that's my string, uh, sorry, a list, and I would like to join them. So you see how to join them. You could say, for example, dash dot join. Okay. So that's the thing that you would like to place in between. Okay. So you see this hyphen or dash or minus will be in between. If you want to put something, it will be there. If you want to say, uh, any anything okay so this is like a placeholder if you want to have some space it will be space or no space no space okay so dot join is exactly opposite of split and that is what we are going to use here to join those sentences but we are not going to join it like that we're going to say every sentence will have this backslash n or you know enter type of uh, prompt there okay so here we do that we add backslash n and join all the sentences and what we get is this new text this text is exactly what we are looking for from this text so the w uh, i and a are capitalized and isc is capitalized okay so it shows you just that simple uh, functions from python can help you automate the formatting and uh, tasks related for data science and we're going to use some of these uh, to handle the data that contains strings okay all right guys so we took two extra minutes but i think uh, uh, we were in the in between so it should be okay and uh, that's it we are going to stop here uh, and we'll continue from in the next class the numpy library so if you have any comments any questions uh, please let me know uh, now or even after the class you can message on ms teams otherwise we'll stop okay okay guys see you in the next class have a good day